Welcome to Charts Today, my name is David Linton and today's edition for Wednesday the 15th of May comes to you from London and we start by looking at the dollar uh, back into bullish territory on the short term chart. Uh, we do have a downside target but if we look at this uh, 60 minute chart we've got three upside targets and the trend is up so that's dominating at the moment and targets as high as 2 or 3% so it does look like the dollar um, will have a little bit of a, a, a renewed push higher. Of course it's bullish on the medium and long term charts as well well. Uh, looking at the uh, euro against the dollar, that stronger dollar means weaker euro dollar and we've got four downside targets increasing the likelihood that we will see the euro fall further. Uh, looking and, and in fact on the medium term chart there's a 7% downside target so scope for falling there. Against the yen the dollar is a little bit weaker, the yen tending to be a safe haven um, with the uncertainty that we've seen over the trade wars recently but it is just starting to come out of the cloud here as well. Sterling back below 130 sitting at 129 bearish against the dollar we've got multiple targets on the downside here 120 6, 127, uh, 126.60. So it does look like sterling will fall further and we still have these long-term targets hanging over us. Uh, and the medium-term chart just starting to look a little bit more worrying on that uh, lagging line. Uh, looking at sterling against the euro, we're also bearish here and now on the short-term chart. And against the Swiss franc, we're back to 130. Uh, looking at Bitcoin, uh, we're just back below the $8,000 mark but the chart is looking extremely strong on the medium and short term uh, charts. Just a bit of a shortage of long term upside targets which is a bit of a concern uh, but we are seeing a re-rating of Bitcoin and so cryptocurrencies are starting to shine again for a lot of uh, traders. Looking at the um, US stock market we're up 0.8% on the S&P last night so quite a strong recovery there. The Nasdaq also uh, recovered a little bit but still bearish on the short term chart um, and then if we look at the Dow it was up 0.8% uh, as well um, but again bearish on that short term chart and the Russell 2000 index uh, still uh, struggling on the broader uh, chart. We're just struggling to make new highs here. We're, we're seeing this lower high. So from a breadth perspective, that is a bit worrying. Uh, looking at the futures this morning, the E-mini is up 0.2% on the S&P and the NASDAQ E-mini up a third of a percent. So it does suggest that the US market will open higher. The UK market up quite strongly um, at, uh, yesterday at uh, 0.8% higher and if we look at the mid caps we're seeing here also looking stronger uh, as well. Uh, so that is a good day yesterday but still bearish on the short term and like that Russell 2000 index just struggling to make new highs. The DAX uh, just below the 12,000 mark um, again just looking bearish on the short term and the CAC current uh, we're seeing here also um, struggling as well. Japan uh, was up uh, 0.6%, uh, so we, we saw um, a bit of improvement there overnight. The Hang Seng um, up 1%, and China, uh, the Shanghai Indus, up 2%. Not enough to change the picture, though. We're still um, bearish on the uh, short term chart, having hit quite strong long term resistance here. The Indian market was up half a percent. The Sensex still has good multiple upside targets on the long term chart, but we do have a downside target of as much as 8%, so we need to just watch that. Um, and looking at the Aussie market, we see we're up uh, nearly three quarters of a percent, but not enough to change the short term picture there either. Brent crude is down at. Uh, uh, $71 this morning so we're just seeing uh, a little bit of weakness creeping in there just hovering around this $71, $72 area. WTI sitting at $61 uh, short term bearish there as well. US NAC gas in the doldrums at $2.66 but starting to look a little bit better on the short term chart not much uh, to play for in terms of targets there. Medium long term still looking pretty awful. Uh, gold had a surge on Monday and we're seeing it holding on to most of that gain. Uh, we do have these upside targets. We're just pulling back a little bit. 1300 um, was touched yesterday but we just couldn't hold that level. And if we look at silver um, we're seeing much the same picture we are in short term bullish mode here as well. US 10 year yields um, sitting at 2.42% and we do have these downside targets into the 230s so we shouldn't be too surprised to see 
further falls there um, and we on the medium term chart we've got a very big downside target if we make new lows um, back below two percent yield rates uh, looking at the stocks um, first of all uh, we see in world indices um, mostly green so that gives us a, a good idea of uh, the, what the market's doing um, so only Indonesia is the only market down in Asia uh, everything else was up um, <clears throat> looking at the Dow 30 last night we see here uh, Visa was the best performer up 1.8% that chart looking pretty good outperforming the Dow by 5% so far this year and good upside targets on the medium term chart uh, Caterpillar was also up um, and we're starting to see that um, is just looking a little bit more bearish on the um, medium and long term charts and then taking a look at the worst performer United Health Group was down 1.3%, uh, McDonald's down half a percent, but the chart's still looking good. So quite a lot of these charts, the worst performers yesterday were the best charts. Um, taking a look at the Aussie market, um, we see here the uh, best performer was uh, uh, Eclipse Group. They were up nearly 12%, but not enough to change this dire looking chart. Massive underperformance, as much as 75% underperformance this year. Zero resources have been one as well that have been on the fall um, and just recovered strongly yesterday, but not enough to change the picture. Uh, looking at the downside, we had Infogen Energy down 2%. Again, this chart not looking great. And Regus Resources, uh, they were down 2% as well. Taking a look at the... Um, the Chinese market we saw here, we were up 2%, so not many stocks down, only two stocks uh, down. Uh, so we are, we did see here, um, Sanjan were down uh, 6%, uh, but nearly everything else was up. On the Nifty 50 in India, um, we've got uh, Aisha Motors Limited, they were up 3.36%. Uh, here we see the live prices coming in from Yahoo. So Aisha actually not enough to change the look of that chart, looking pretty bad. Bajaj Finance actually looking pretty good um, and we see here on the relative uh, climbing although we still haven't beaten the Dow so far this year looking at Z Entertainment uh, they had big falls this year they were down a further 8% it just keeps coming back and Yes Bank similarly um, breaking to new lows so that's really significant um, we do have a downside target so I'm 70% lower but it's a loan target but we see here um, the picture is not great. Tata Motors Limited um, look like they're turning a corner on that medium term chart. <clears throat> Taking a look at Europe now, now we start with the UK market. Uh, this data coming from Yahoo Finance again. Tui, the best performer this morning. Uh, they're up nearly 3%, um, but not enough to really change the chart. GVC Holdings up 1.6%. Here we see the live pricing coming in from Yahoo. Kingfisher Group down 2%, uh, so struggling there. And National Grid down uh, 2%. Of course, this is my long term weekly uh, 1%, my daily half percent and uh, my relative to the Dow Jones. So this just gives me my window on the market on any stock. And of course you can click on any stock to get that picture straight away. Um, and you can download this um, uh, same template from uh, the libraries in Updater. Looking <coughs> at the worst performers, uh, or the best performer on uh, the FTSE 250 this morning, uh, CYBG up 9%. Not enough really to change the long-term picture, but mm, starting to let head enter into recovery mode here. I had a terrible year last year. Uh, Amigo Holdings, they're up 3.5%, looking better there. And if we look at the downside, we've got Sports Direct down 2.3%. Aston Martin, ever since their float, have really headed south, so not looking great there either. Um, so quite key. Uh, and then if we look into Europe, uh, we start by uh, looking at the best performers. CRH in Ireland, they're up um, 1%. SAP Group in Germany up 0.8%. And then if we look at the downside, uh, we've got Volkswagen down 2.3% um, and Sockgen um, down 1.2%. Maybe just seeing a little bit of a recovery there. It's quite interesting. Um, but uh, we're seeing really choppy market conditions there for Volkswagen. That's it for today. Until tomorrow, happy charting. See you then.